How many know he is worthy to be praised? Right, don't sit down yet. Don't, we're going to have church today. We're going to have church today because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will what? Rejoice and be what? Glad in it. So go encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Come on, encourage your neighbor. Go tell him it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yeah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love him. Hallelujah. He worthy. Hallelujah. He loved him. Yeah! It's good to be here. It's good to be here. again and say Lord it's, it's good to be here it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time amen amen what a mighty God we serve how many know he's worthy come on how many know he's worthy amen amen to God be the glory to God be the glory you got that Amen, 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 amen. Come on, point at somebody and say, God loves you. Yeah, one more time, mother. God loves you. <laughs> yes, he does. All right, all that who can stand, this is how we're going to get started. If you will pay attention to the stream, we're going to read this together, okay? Are we ready? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Everybody read. All ye lands, serve the Lord with come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with what? And into his courts with what? Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. We got to finish. For the Lord what? Come on. For the Lord is what? His mercy and his truth to all generations. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. You may have your seats. We thank God for another day we thank God for another day that he has kept us amen 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 I see my good friend here mr. Keith Davis that's my man and his beautiful wife come on let's give them a hand all of y'all who may not know him yeah let's raise your hands please that's my good friend there mr. Keith Davis that's um, Reverend Davis brother amen amen to God be the glory to God be the glory Brother, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. And I want to take this time to thank all of you um, who have prayed for me during the time that I was going through my surgery. And I had a checkup, follow-up on Wednesday. Well, you know they call me King Kong, right? So King Kong is back climbing buildings. <laughs> The doctor said everything looks good. Um, it's healing like it's supposed to heal. And it was not a 
cancerous. So we tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Prayer still works. Amen. Amen. Prayer still works. So King Kong is back being King Kong. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. God is good. God is good. And also, I'm excited again as well to see all of your beautiful faces on today. But it's something about when, you, when your daughter is in town. My daughter is here today, Sakina Protel. Amen. I am excited about that. I'm excited about that. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We're going to continue to pray with her as she can go forward with her future. Amen. God knows the plans for us. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue to pray for her and her future. Amen. And all of you who are here, God be the glory. We are glad to see all of you here on today. I'm ready to have some church. How about you? I'm ready to have some church. So I'm going to get the little preliminaries out of the way. Um, 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 we will have Bible study on the Wednesday. We will have Bible study on Wednesday. And this coming Thursday, we ask if you're traveling 4th of July, please, please um, drive with caution and be a defensive driver. It's dangerous out here now, but we, the Lord wants us to have fun, but we got to learn how to protect and be careful if you're traveling and different stuff like that. Amen. So enjoy your 4th of July um, weekend. Amen? Amen. Amen. But we will have Bible study on uh, Wednesday. And I want to thank Dr. Randall and all of her uh, assistants, Dr. <laughs> Get ready to say Dr. Sandra Alla. <laughs> <laughs> All those who work with Dr. Randall, well, I just want to tell you thank you for Vacation Bible School. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. <laughs> Amen. Had a great, a great theme, the value of reconciliation. Ah, there's some value in that. Amen. Amen. We had a tough subject, but a very produ productive subject. Of dealing with um, unforgiveness. Wow. Uh, ain't about here one amen, <laughs> two amens, but forgiving people is really tough, but it's, it's something that we have to do. Amen. 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 You, don't, you don't want to hold anything that just slows us down. Amen. But we thank God for a very uh, productive um, vacation Bible school. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And also, we want to thank everyone who came out and participated, all the teachers and all the youth who came out. Uh, it was a success. We thank God. Everybody, we work better together. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. To God be the glory. And also, we want to thank uh, my good friend, my good friend, Pastor William Jones, who will be preaching for us on today. Let's give him a hand. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Pastor William Jones and Lady Jones is with him on today. And all of his deacons and officers uh, came with him on today. We thank God for y'all worshiping with us on the day. I, if you know me by now, I believe in bringing people together. Uh, if we can't come together now during these tough times, I don't know when we're going to be able to do it. But we thank God for bringing people together. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. So at this time, I uh, think I didn't miss anything. Uh, oh, for July, please get your July announcements ready for next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Get your July announcements ready for next Sunday. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask uh, High Hill uh, to come give us a, a song. Uh, <laughs> He, he, Jeffrey said you want me to sing. While they're coming, I could be singing, right? <laughs> See, y'all don't know them old hymns. It's another day that the Lord has kept me. Kept my mind stead on thee. It's another day that the Lord has kept me see them 
to mow him, them to mow him, them to mow him, them to mow him. He has kept me. Look at mother. See, mother know about to mow him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Y'all come slide down, please. Slide, slide down so they can. All right. No, no. A uh, little, little closer, a little closer. So they, you, see, you see yourselves right there? There we go. Y'all good? Now, I'll be your background singer if y'all need me. I'm right here if you need me, okay? All right. Holy Spirit, you welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you welcome in this place. Oh, Holy Spirit, you welcome. Until you come in this place, Lord, I can't do nothing until you come in this place. Lord, I can't do nothing until you come in this place. Holy Spirit, you welcome in this place. Oh, you welcome, you welcome in this place. Lord, you welcome, you welcome. You come in this place. Holy Spirit, you welcome in this place. Oh, you welcome, you welcome in this place. Oh, you welcome, you welcome in this place. Oh, you welcome, you welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you welcome in this place. You come in this place. Holy Spirit, you welcome in this place. Oh, you welcome, you welcome in this place. Lord, you welcome, you welcome in this place. Lord, you welcome, you welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you welcome in this place. Tell the Lord, thank you. Test one, two. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank High Hill for that selection. That we just love the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, also, I failed to. I got kind of ex excited that um, how the the doctor released me. 
So if the Lord's will, I will be back preaching on next Sunday. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And also, I want to warn you that um, since I'm back, Mother Allah, I went from three points to about seven or eight, you think? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm excited about coming back and preaching, and the Lord been dealing with me with a lot of things, and um, word, and uh, it just lets me know that I'm still connected to him, and I still can hear him. Amen. But also, there are some special prayers that I want to um, everyone to pray um, along with other people. Um, uh, everybody needs prayer, but uh, uh, we ask that you pray for um, my family and all families. Amen. Amen. It's nothing like prayer and families. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Um, it's a beautiful thing when family can still talk and do things together. Amen. You're blessed if you have that. Amen. 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 You know, it's, it's the road is not easy, but uh, it's a road that you still can travel. Amen. Amen. And, and church folk, if we're going to be who we say we are, we got to learn to continue to love one another. Amen. And do what does say of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody is somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. So at this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for uh, tithes and offering, offerings. And, um, and after that, we're going to be ready for a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask this side to stand as um, Hope and Karen come up with the baskets or Amen. 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 This side, please stand and walk all the way around, please. This side, stand. <clears throat> Look, does my daughter have any words she would like to say on today? Amen. Yeah, sure she do. Here, take her the mic back there. <clears throat> Did she say, yeah, I can't see it. Okay. <laughs> Amen. To God be the good. Old folk used to say, just give us some marching music. Amen. Ask this side to please stand. Oh, this is for the youth. This is for the youth. Thank you. This is for the youth. This side, please stand. This side, please stand.
God is good. We today get seated and we're going to do the offering prayer. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you, God, for this offering and tithes. We ask now that it be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We're going to ask High Hill to come back and, and um, give us at least two songs. And then after that, we'll be ready for a word from the Lord. At least two songs. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give them another hand as they come.
Oh, Lord, hold my hand while I, while I run this race. Let's give Pastor Henry a hand. Thank God for my beautiful first lady. Let's please let's give her a hand. And the first lady of this house. Amen. Amen. I, I thank God for you inviting us. I, uh, I was so excited. My wife would be a witness. I was on schedule to go somewhere else, but I called it off. <laughs> Amen. That's how good, I, how much I enjoy coming down to St. Paul. Amen. 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 I thank God for my church family. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my deacons, uh, uh, my trustees, this wonderful choir. Mother of our church, amen. Yeah. amen sister Pope. And, and, and our musicians, Tyler and Kenny, amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah. And it, it was very important for me that Tyler came today because I, I wanted Tyler to experience the love of the people yeah. 
when you serve God the right way. Amen. 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 Brother Kenny called me yesterday. He was broken because his brother died yesterday. Amen. And I said, well, Kenny, you, you don't have to come, man. I understand. He said, Pastor, I need to be there. Mm. See, you know the Lord is taking you somewhere when you can recognize, I need to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you. We're praying for God's strength to keep on strengthening you because he's still in charge. Amen. I'm not going to trouble you long. I thank God for my friend, Pastor Henry. Uh, God knows we've been praying for him. And King Kong needs prayer sometime. Amen. You, you never know when he's going to fall off one of them buildings, you know. Amen. So King Kong needed prayer. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not going to trouble your time. I'm just going to ask if you turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Psalms 46. Yeah. Mm. Psalms 46. Psalms 46. Amen. I love these two guys right here, man. They they they, they always on point. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I tell you what, I look up to y'all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Psalms 46. We're going to look down at verse 10. Amen. And we're going we're going to go through this psalm, but we're going to we're going to hang on to verse 10. Everybody there? Be still. And know that I am God. You may be seated. Right. Be still and know that I am God. I'm, I'm going to try to act right today, y'all. I don't want to embarrass my wife, she, but I'm, I'm going to act like somebody today. I'm going to be dignified. Amen. But, but, but if I, by chance, I step out of character, y'all have mercy on me. Amen. Amen. Because I believe in letting the Lord have his way. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this glorious occasion. We thank you, Father, for uh, being able to come to a place where you feel welcome, God. And so, Lord, we ask, oh, Lord, that while we are here, Lord, we, we don't want to waste your time. We, we just ask that you give us a word. A word that's going to carry us through the week. God, we thank you. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. And Lord, feed them. As they sit at the table, feed them, God, the word of God. Lord, we thank you. We lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to use for a topic on today, uh, when it's out of your reach. It's in God's hand. Yeah. When, when it's out of your reach, it's in God's hand. My brothers and sisters, have you ever found yourself trying to handle a life only to find yourself coming up short? Somebody know what I'm talking about. You, 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 and, and you go to the Lord's house looking for a word uh, from the Lord and, 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 and to help you understand what your next move should be only to hear the man or woman of God say, just put it in the Lord's hand. Well, to put everything into the Lord's hands, uh, that means that we're entrusting our situation to the Lord totally. Yeah. Understanding that God doesn't want some of your problems, but he wants all of them. That, that means that we're, putting, uh, 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 we're now putting all of our eggs in one basket. But the good news is the basket belongs to God. Yeah. And truth be told, sometimes we don't know how to put stuff in the Lord's hands. We don't know how to let go and... And let God, we, we don't know how to take it to the Lord and just leave it there. Amen. And when we as people of God advise people to put things in the Lord's hand, all we're doing is expressing a wholehearted trust in the Lord. 
Can I get a witness? See, see, we can't trust God half-heartedly and expect him to bless us wholeheartedly. Yeah. When we trust him uh, uh, wholeheartedly, we're basically saying, Lord, I I'm handing this matter over to you, and I'm trusting that you're going to act on my behalf. Yeah. This is a posture of faith. And it causes the people of God to realize that with God, all things are possible to those that believe. It is the recognition of God's perfect timing uh, for our life. And, and as we wait, our spiritual muscles are, 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 are being strengthened by God. Because watch this, positive outlook determines positive outcome. Are y'all going to help me today? So some years ago, some years ago, I, 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 I got a chance, uh, Deacon, uh, uh, to fly out to Houston, Texas, uh, to a leadership conference. And, and it was my first time flying. I, I, I was nervous. And, and, and while we were flying, the captain came on the intercom, and he announced, he said, we're about to encounter some air pockets. <laughs> I, I got scared because I didn't know the air had pockets. And so I, I, I didn't know what that meant. He said, but we're about to encounter uh, some air pockets, and, 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 uh, but in a little while, you're going to experience some turbulence. Yes, sir, yes, he said, but don't worry, it's only going to last for a moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. He said, it may get a little shaky. Yeah. It, it may get a little rocky, Brother Kenny, but, but, but don't worry, it's only going to last temporary. And God sent me to St. Paul today to tell somebody uh, on this journey that, that I'm taking you on, there's going to be some turbulence. There's going to be some shakeups. There's going to be some times when you're going to have to cry and you don't know why you're crying. There's going to be some shakeups in your life. But the good news is it'll only last for a moment. I'm talking about turbulence. Somebody going through turbulence right now. Turbulence in your home, turbulence in your relationship, turbulence with your children. The doctor gave somebody a report and it caused turbulence. In fact, it seemed like the higher you go with the Lord, the more turbulence you seem to encounter. And truth be told, right now things are starting to look scary. Because chances are you've never been on a ride this high. But, but in the midst of you going through, in the midst of turbulent times, God sent me to tell you, don't worry. Because this turbulence is just temporary. It'll be all over after a while. Tell your neighbor, it'll be all over after a while. I, I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you're fighting against. But the Lord said, it'll be all over after a while. <laughs> Trouble don't last always. God says, I know your situation looks intimidating because you've never faced anything like this before. But the good news is God says, I'm going to bring you through it. Somebody missed a shout right about that. Because the Lord said, I'm going to bring you through it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't bring you to it not to bring you through it. The Lord said, I'm going to bring you through it. Now watch this. Even in the midst of going through turbulence in your life, you got to trust that God is in the midst of it with you. Yeah. You got to trust that God is in it with you. And, and when you really trust in the Lord, he'll give you a sense of peace that surpasses, that surpasses, that passes by all understanding. I'm talking about when all hell can be breaking loose all around you. You, you can be like David in Psalm 34. I'll bless the Lord at all times. And, and his praise shall continually preach, Joseph, in my mouth. Now, if you've never been through anything, you won't know what I'm talking about. Huh. Hebrews. 4 and 3 says, only we who believe can enter into his place of rest. Now, when we put everything in God's hand, this doesn't mean that we don't have a part to play in it. Come on, somebody. 
there's sometimes God will handle things on his own. But then there's sometimes he'll give you directions on what you need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are times when he'll just tell us to be still and trust in him. But then there are other times when he'll give us directions. Well, preacher, how do we know the difference? I'm glad you asked. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, in the Amplified Bible, lean on, trust in, be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely, do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, recognize and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make straight and make plain your path. As we put our trust in God and as we stay close in close communication with him, we can expect God to order our steps and direct our path. What I come to tell somebody today is when it's out of your reach, it's in God's hand. Yeah, I know it's hard. I, I, I know it's heavy. I, I know it's discouraging. I know it's scary. But just know that the Lord says when it's out of your reach, don't worry about it because it's all in the master's hand. Yeah, yeah. My brothers and sisters, have you ever had something that happened in your life and, and you knew it was God at work? Yeah, you, you knew it won't nobody but the Lord because can't nobody do me like Jesus. In fact, somebody's facing some situations right now, and that's just how life feels sometimes. It seems like trouble always knows where to find you. Yeah. And when trouble finds you, trouble overwhelms you. But from out of nowhere, God shows up. And when God shows up, he starts to move in a way that only God can move. And I believe there's somebody in St. Paul today that's in a tough spot right now. There's somebody that's facing some giants right now. And you just before giving up, you just before throwing your hands up, you just before throwing in the towel. But I'm so glad that I serve an out of nowhere God. And out of nowhere God, he shows up out of nowhere and makes your path straight. He shows up out of nowhere and dries your tears. He shows up out of nowhere and calms your fears. He shows up out of nowhere and makes a way out of no way. Have you ever had God to just show up out of nowhere? Mama used to say it like this, he may not come when you want him to come, but he's always, always on time. Somebody say he's an all time God. Yes, he is. I come, I come this morning with a special assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to tell somebody when it's out of your reach, it's in God's hand. And it's in our, and, and he is an out of a nowhere God. Yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor he's an out of nowhere God. He'll just show up out of nowhere. When you're in the hospital, he'll just show up out of nowhere. When you're going through bereavement, he'll just show up out of nowhere. When people turn their back on you and you feel like you don't have nobody, he'll just show up. He'll show up. He'll show up out of nowhere. And start making ways that only he can do. Yeah, yeah. As we look at Psalms 46, we read 46 and 10, but I want us to go back to 46 and 1 because the psalmist is encouraging us to hope and trust in the Lord. He's showing us why we have a reason to shout and give God glory. Yeah. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what verse 1 says. Uh, and, and that's the reason uh, I'm so glad that God is who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that don't even sound right. The, the psalmist is encouraging us to put our hope and our trust in God. <laughs> he, he's showing us why we have a reason to shout and give God glory. 
And that reason is God is our refuge and strength, a very present help, a right now help in the time of trouble. Somebody didn't get it. Can I be real with you this morning? Even though I agree with every word the psalmist said in verse 1, when I read verse 2, it kind of made me say, hmm. Mm. I, I didn't under, quite understand this one because verse 2 says, therefore, will not we fear. That's right. Oh, God. Now, now, you might not know why I had to stop and say, hmm, until I, I tell you about some of the things that happened in my life in these past a couple of years. On February 2022, I lost my sister Peggy to COVID-19, and I had to preach a funeral. Six months later, I lost my big brother and my best friend Gillis to COVID-19, and I had to preach his funeral. On October 18, 2023, God so fit to call my big sister slash mother home to glory, and I had to preach her funeral. And in the midst of all of this, help me, Holy Ghost, my son William II. My baby boy got shot in the chest with a nine millimeter. And the doctor said, Jones, I don't know if he's going to make it. Right now, it's not looking good. Right now, things are not looking too good for him. But Psalms, help me, Holy Ghost, 46 and 2 is still telling me the same thing. Therefore, will not we fear? I had a problem with that. And God said before you get caught up on this, make sure you read the entire song. Uh. Oh God, help me Holy Ghost. Help me Holy Ghost. Can, can I be real this morning? I know verse 2 says, therefore will not we fear. But truth be told, because of all the loved ones that I had already lost and buried Brother Stroke, and I know I was wrong, but Pastor Jones was scared. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know all of you are a lot more spiritual than I am, and, and you never got scared in your life about anything, and, and you never been nervous about nothing. You, because when you call God, he comes right then, and, and every time you pray, he shows up at that moment. But, but I'm not that spiritual yet, and, and, and I'm kind of like Mary and Martha. Sometimes he makes me wait. And I found out that some stuff in life were scared of faith right out of you. That's where, Pastor Henry, I found myself. With all the people and loved ones that I loved so dearly that had left me and gone home already. I was at a point in my life where my faith had been wounded. Yes, the preacher was going through a scary moment. Yes, the pastor felt intimidated by death. Yeah. But at that moment, I wasn't the preacher uh -huh. and I wasn't the pastor. I was a parent that was watching his child die. Yeah. Oh, God. But the Lord yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is an out of nowhere God. He may not come. He may not come. He may not show up. When you want him to show up. But he is uh, an old time God. Yes, he is. Can I say this? I was sitting in when, when you chill, when your child, when somebody gets shot at, at Grand Strand, they don't tell you nothing. You just have to sit there. They told me my son won't even dare to start with. I said, I know he's here. They said, well, we can't tell you nothing. I said, can, can you tell me if he's alive or dead? We can't tell you nothing. Can I just go see? No, you can't see him. In fact, we can't even tell you he's here. I said, is there anything I can do? All we can tell you to do is pray. I took him at their word. I started praying. All of a sudden, a security guard walked by. He said, sir, I noticed you've been here for the last couple of days. You all right? You need anything? I said, they won't let me see my son. I don't know if he's alive or dead or what. They won't tell me nothing. 
He said, well, what's your son's name? I said, William Jones II. He said, give me a minute. He walked around. He came back. He said, come on. I said, where we going? I'm taking you to your son. He took me in there where my son was and all kind of pipes. He's on life support, and I was broken. But at least I got to see my son. While I was there, the doctor showed up. Why are you in here? Who let you in here? I said, the security guard. What security guard? I described it. They said, we don't have nobody like that work here. I said, well, he's a security guard down in the, at the first floor, and he brought me here. Sir, we don't have nobody like that work here. But since you're already here, we're going to let you stay. When the Lord shows up, out of nowhere, he's an old time God. I'm in the waiting room, and the doctors come to me. And this song saying the same thing. Therefore, will not you fear. God is saying, preacher, you can't get a conclusion from part of the scripture. You got to look at the entirety of the scripture. Because in this first few verses, the psalmist is talking about God and how he makes and ceases wars and, and he talks about uh, how he does great and mighty things and, 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 and about how he destroys the chariots uh, but, but then verse 10 this is where I got my groove back <laughs> verse 10 verse 10 is where my perspective changed because in verse 10 is where God started speaking to me this is verse 10 is where God started speaking to the church and this is why I got happy this is, oh, help me somebody. Is there anybody in St. Paul today that's grateful that every now and then, and here's my first point, it's what God says that counts. Is there anybody that's happy? Because it don't matter what people say. It don't matter what the doctor say. It don't matter what the lawyers say. It don't matter what the judges say. It's what God says that counts. He is God. God will open up his own mouth and begin to speak to you directly in ways that you need to hear from him. See, there are times when, when I don't need to know. I don't know what to say. But, but God knows what to say. And when he said, I, when my friend Pastor Henry lost his mother a while back. I wanted to talk to him and, and comfort him. And, and truth be told, I didn't know what to say. And so I didn't want to say the wrong thing. Sometimes if you don't know what to say, just don't say nothing. But, but even though I didn't know what to say, God was saying all the right things. And, and just like he told me, I'm, I believe he told Pastor Henry the same thing. God says, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> Be still and know that I am the Lord. Everybody is dealing with something. And the Lord says, be still. I, I know it looks scary, but be still. I, I, I know it looks like uh, you, need to do, you need to do something, but God says, be still. God says, be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, help me. And when, and when you can stand still and know that I am God, that's when you will realize that God is still in control. God is saying to the church today, you can't handle this situation. It's out of your reach. It's too much for you to handle. But the good news is he's God and he's got you. Yeah. I dare somebody to shout, God got me. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. You, you might not like me. You, you might not approve of me. But God got me. I, and don't he slay me. Don't he slay me. I'm still going to trust in the Lord.
because he's got me. I found out that after you suffered a while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory will himself restore, confirm, and strengthen, and establish you. Somebody shout, in spite of what you thought, in spite of what you thought, God's got me. I'm so glad. I said I'm so glad that I serve a father that's not a deadbeat daddy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I serve a father that will fight for his children, that will take care of his children. If you look back at verse 2, even the worst should come. Even if the worst should come, you can still trust the Lord. He said, even if the mountains should be thrown in the sea, though the waters roar and the mountains shake, he says, don't worry because God is in the midst of it all. And he says, be still. Relax. Stop stressing over it. Everything that you go through, you can't be a child of God and, and, and that you claim to be and you're always stressing over everything that comes your way. Oh, I know it hurts what they did to you. I know it hurts what they said about you. I know it hurts about what you're going through, but you can't be depressed your whole life and still saying you trust in the Lord. See, by the way, some of us act, we should still be in the recovery room. Because you never recovered from how people cut you. Yeah. But sooner or later, you got to start your healing process. And it starts with your faith in God. See, in verse 10, God says, be still and know that I am God. See, watch this. There's going to come a time when you're going to have, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You're going to have to remember. And here's my second point. God is still God. Yeah. Every now and then, you got to remind yourself, Mother Pope, that God is still God. People might change, but God is still God. When, when you know that God is still God, it affects how you live. When you know that God is still God, you will have a clear understanding of, of the scripture. When it says, no weapon, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, the Lord will. You ain't got to lift a finger. The Lord will. The Lord will condemn. But you got to relax and know that he is God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In verse 10, he says, be still and know that I am God. God is still God. And when you know that God is still God, it affects your lifestyle. That's right. You can't know that God is still God and live the same way you've always been living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to understand that he is God. The psalmist was talking about God, and he was telling us how God was with him. He said, he's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my very present help in times of trouble. Watch this. You never know how strong God is until you realize how weak life has you. Yeah. Life will put you in some weak moments. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to realize who God is. He says, and I'm your present help in times of trouble. Even before the troubles arrive, God is already present. That's why he said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. The table was prepared before you got to it. All he wanted you to do was show up to the table. He was there. He was there before your trouble arrived. In other words, you don't have to go looking for God. Searching for God. When you're a child of God, God is already present in you. Yeah. Where were the Hebrew boys at this morning? D didn't we put three men in the fire? Well, why is it that now I see four men walking around and, and one of them looks like the son of God? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody that can testify 
he'll get in it with you. I, I, I tell a story everywhere I go uh, about this uh, uh, father, this grandfather who was playing with the baby in the playpen. And, and while he was playing with the baby, the baby started crying. And he, he reached in and he picked the baby up out of the playpen. And the baby stopped crying. But the daughter came. She said, Daddy, put him back in the playpen. You, you raised me. Now let me raise him. You're going to spoil that boy. You can't pick him up every time he starts crying. He put him back and the baby started screaming. And the grandfather said, she said, I can't get in it with you. She said, I can't get you out of it. She said, I can't pick you up. But, but she didn't say I couldn't get in it with you. See, every time I cry out to the Lord, he don't pick me up out of it. Sometimes he let me cry. Sometimes he let me go through what I'm going through. But he always get in it with me. And when he get in it with me, he let me know weeping me endure for a night. Weeping may endure for a night. I don't believe you hear me. Weeping may endure for a night. Somebody cried all night, but weeping may endure for a night, but joy will. Come in the morning. The psalmist says, the Lord of hosts is with you. In other words, the all-powerful God, the God that will prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. He's in it with you. God is saying, life will sometimes cloud your vision. But no matter how cloudy your vision, you got to recognize who I am. Yeah. Then he said, I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. Now, the word heathen means those that don't believe that he's able to do what he says he can do. He, he says, I'm going to be exalted among them. I, I'm going to be exalted among the people that don't like you. I'm going to be exalted among the people that talked about you. I'm going to be exalted among the people that said you would never be nothing. The Lord said, I will be exalted among them. God is saying, I don't care how bad your situation is. I'm still the one in charge. And here's my last point, and we're going home. God has the final word. I said God has the final word. It, it ain't over until God says it's over. Pastor Henry, I was watching basketball games some years back between the Orlando Magic and uh, the Chicago Bulls. And because of the death of his grandmother, uh, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, was late arriving to the game. And Coach Brian Hill says, no one that gets to the game late will be put in the game. That's right, yeah. right. Coach Brian Hill said, that's my rule, and I don't break my rules for nobody. In, in order to play, uh, he has to be here right. on time because I'm not going to break the rules for nobody. But it just so happened that the owner of the team was in the building. And when the owner of the team saw what was going on, the owner sent a messenger. He said, go down and tell Coach Hill that I said, put Shaq in the game. <laughs> the coach didn't like it. He didn't want to do it because it was against his rule. But it wasn't about him now. It was about the man in charge. <laughs> That's the reason I'm happy today. Because when others said I didn't deserve to be in this game of life, God had the final say so. In spite of what others said, God put me in. I was messed up, but he put me in. I was broken, but he went against some rules and he put me in. I was dirty, but he put me in. Don't know about you. But I'm so glad that God broke rules just to put me in the game. When somebody come and they say, preacher, how did you become a preacher? As messed up as you was, I said, can we be because God broke some rules. God broke some rules to put me in the game. When they come to you and say, how are you playing the keyboard as rough and messy as you was? Just tell them the Lord 
books and rooms to put me in. When they come to tell you how you're still singing on the choir as much as you used to cuss, tell them God broke some rooms to put me in the game. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I serve a God that broke some rules. Should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. Because the word of God says, oh, help me. Should have been dead. Because the wages of sin is death. See, when I was born, I was an unwanted child. And my mother left me in the hospital. Nobody even knew she was pregnant. But the doctor called my grandparents. He said, we got a baby over here that your daughter had and left. And somebody need to come get this baby before we call DSS. And my granddaddy said, told mama, he said, let's go get that boy because he may have to take care of us one day. And my grandmother and my grandfather went and got me. And they took me home and they raised me. And they taught me morals and values. And, and they taught me about God. And, and she taught me the Bible. And, and she taught me what thus says the Lord. Don't despise small beginnings. I was in Hardy's one day. And a lady walked up to me. She said, what's your name? I said, William. She said, they call you Jerry, don't they? I said, yeah. She said, your mother told me you were dead. And it broke my heart. But the word said, be still and know that he is God. Even when you feel broken, even when the whole world seems to be against you, even when your mother don't want you, even when your father don't want you, be still and know that he is God. He is God. So whenever I'm not cussing, but people even call me a bastard child. That hurts. But then I realized who my daddy was. <laughs> uh, when I realized I knew my father. See, I know who my daddy is. My daddy the same one that woke me up this morning. Yeah. So when they asked me, how did you become a preacher? As messed up as your life was. I said because God broke some rules to put me in the game. And I wonder if there anybody just can say, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is, it is to carry everything Everything, everything to the Lord in prayer. So don't you give up. Don't you quit. Because when it's out of your reach, it's still in the master's hand. Come on and give God a praise. personal Savior, we invite that you come right now. Give the preacher your hand and God your heart. And 
God would take care of the rest. Would there be one? Is there anybody that needs prayer on today? I don't know if you realize it or not. He is a prayer answering God. When nobody else cares, just know that Jesus cares. Jesus cares. Jesus cares. Your neighbor might not care. Your church member might not care. But Jesus cares. And because he cares, he'll make a way. 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 Precious Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth that thou hast set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have thou ordained strength that that might avenge the enemy and my avenger. When I consider the works of your hands, the moon and the stars, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What is the son of man that thou have made him a little lower than the angels? Father, we come right now, O oh God, with our heads bowed and our hearts humbled, realizing, O oh God, that sometimes life can be out of reach. But Lord, we know it's still in your hands. And because it's in your hands, that's the reason we call you today. Because down here in this mean old world, Lord, somebody needs you to touch them. Somebody needs you to turn some things around. Somebody needs you to bless their home. Somebody needs you to bless their child. Somebody needs you to heal their body. Lord, as we stand here on today, Lord, we're asking, we're pleading with you, God. Bless the shepherd of this house. Bless the man of God that you sit here and that you put in charge. Lord, I'm asking that you touch him from the inside out. Anything that's not like you, God, we rebuke it right now. Lord, we ask him that you have your way. Have your way, oh Lord. Lord, we're asking that you bless this church family. Lord, we're asking that you move from heart to heart, from mind to mind. We're asking, oh God, that you touch them in a mighty and a special way. Father, they said their name is the love factory. Lord, I'm asking that you remind them from time and time again that love covers a multitude of sin. Let them know that love lifts us up to where we belong. Let them know, God, that you are still God. Lord, I'm asking that you touch my church family. Bring us together, God, like glue. Hold us together as only you can do. Be that vice, God, that squeezes the love out of us. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you just because of who you are. We thank you because of what you've already done. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, oh God. We're the ones, oh God that have been called by your name. 
And now we humble ourselves and pray and we we'll seek your faith. And Lord, we're determined to turn from our wicked ways because we want you to hear from heaven. We want you to forgive us of our sins. And moreover, we want you to heal our land. God, we thank you. Bless our children. Keep them safe. The devil wants to sift them like wheat. But keep them safe, God. I know you ain't out of nowhere, God. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now unto him. Now unto him. Now unto him. That is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. To the only true living and all wise God. Lord, we consider ourselves dismissed, dismissed, dismissed. In Jesus' name, amen.